Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Swigard. I am a technical analyst for the EDOC support team, and today's EDOX DM training is installing EDOX workflow and configuring notifications. In this training, we'll be learning how to install EDOX workflow, how to sync users from EDOX, how to set up notifications, and how to check that notifications are working. I'd like to quickly mention that this training video assumes that you have the prerequisites for EDOX DM server installed. If you do not, please see the EDOX installation guide for DM10. All right, to start, let's remote into the server where you have EDOX installed. Once you have it pulled up, navigate to your EDOX installation file share location and double click the EDOX DM10 workflow server.msi to kick off the installation. If you receive a security warning, click run. Follow the prompts clicking next, and agreeing to the license agreement until you get to the features screen. When you are here, make sure that all the features are selected for installation. Click Next. If you would like to change the default installation folder, do so now. If not, continue. The screen you are now on should ask for you to enter the machine of your DM server. Fill it out. In my case, it is the same machine that I'm already on. Click Next and fill out the domain username that you would like to run the service as, and password for that account, confirming the password after. Click Next, Install, wait for it to do its work, and click Finish. You will be asked if you want to generate the tables required for workflow. If you have installed workflow and generated the tables before, select No. Otherwise, this will overwrite any existing workflow tables in the database. If you have never installed Workflow before, select Yes. After selecting Yes, you will be prompted to fill out your database connection information. In my case, I'm using SQL, so I will select that from the dropdown and then continue through the prompts, answering my SQL server name, SA account, and password until I get to a list of existing databases. Here, you'll want to choose from the database whose EDOX library you would like to generate the workflow tables for. The final prompt you will get will ask for the WFADM account. If you have never created this account on your database server, you can enter whatever you like. If you have created this account before, you'll need to enter your previously set password. Select Finish, click Yes, Wait for the tables to be created, and click Finish again. Now perform the same steps for archiving. You will be asked if you want to generate the tables required for archiving, and again you are going to click Yes, select your database type, click Next, fill out your server name, click Next, enter your SA credentials, Click Next, select your database name, click Next, enter your WFADM password, click Next, click Yes, wait for the tables to be created, and click Finish. At this point you are all set. The next section we're going to go over is syncing EDOX users to workflow. For this part, you should still be remoted into your freshly set up EDOX workflow server. To start, you'll want to click the Start menu icon, find the DM workflow site and user synchronization executable, and launch it. A little side note, you'll want to run this utility whenever you have added users to EDOX that also need to be added to workflow. It won't be done automatically. When the dialog box opens, select Synchronize DM users to DM workflow users. Click Next, fill out your database information on the left side of the box, click Next, select the library or libraries you would like to sync from, and click Next. Now this next screen will let you specify users or groups that you would like to sync to workflow. If you only want to sync certain users, select them. Select the Synchronize Selected Users option, and then click Next. However, for this example, I'm going to synchronize all my EDOX users to workflow. So I'll select Synchronize All Users and click Next. 
Here you may see a prompt asking about standard working hours. Fill it out and continue by clicking OK and then click Finish. It will go through the synchronization process and then give you a prompt saying that it is complete. When you click OK, you will more than likely receive an error stating the user synchronization utility has stopped working. You can ignore it and close it, since everything should have synced successfully. The next section is setting up workflow notifications. You should still be remoted into an eDocs workflow server. To start, enable the SMTP mail notification tab by configuring the following registry key. HKey local machine, software, WoW 6432 node, Hummingbird, DM workflow server. Here, you'll want to create a new D word called SMTP enabled and set the value to one. You can now close the registry editor. Click the start menu icon, find the workflow administration tool executable and launch it. It will ask you to log in. The name WFSA will already be filled and grayed out. The default password is password, all lowercase. Enter it and click connect. So in the workflow administration tool, there are many settings that you can tweak depending on personal preference. But the only other thing that really needs to be set up to get workflow up and running is the notification feature so that users know when they've received a task. There are quite a few settings we have to fill out to get notifications working, so I'm just going to quickly go through the setup. If you have any questions about a specific setting, please see the eDocs Workflow Administration Guide. Select the DM Workflow Agent tab, click Settings, select the SMTP Mail Notification tab, fill out your Exchange server name, leave your port set to 25, Enter the username and password for an email account that has rights to send to all users. And enter the name and email address you want to appear on the message notifications when they are received. Select the DM Super User tab. Enter a Docs Supervisor account. The password. And the password once more to confirm it. Select the Connection Parameters tab. Select your vendor name in the drop down list. Enter your database server name. Enter your database name. And enter the username and password that can access the database. Select the Messaging Notification tab. Enter your DM library name the DM super user that you previously entered on the DM super user tab and confirm that password twice. You're now finished with the settings dialog box so press OK to save your changes and continue. Back at the main workflow administration tool window select the notification tab. In the section that says attachment check DM workflow extensions and then click apply. Select the Users and Groups tab, Expand Users, double click your user, enter the mail address, select SMTP, and click OK. Finally, you want to close the Workflow Admin tool, open up Task Manager, nwfwrap.exe and relaunch the admin tool. In this section, we're going to quickly check to see if workflow and notifications are working. On a client workstation that has workflow installed as part of extensions, launch eDocs and log in. The user you're logging in as should have permissions to create routes and the SMTP address filled out in the workflow admin tool. On the main pane, double click workflow Routes and Templates, Blank Template. On the New Route Dialog Boxes General tab, check the Mail Notification box, select the Stages tab, click New, select Stage, 
Add the user you're logged in as to the selected performers list. Click OK and click OK again. Back in the main eDocs extensions window, select DM Workflow, Incoming Tasks, right click New Route, click Done, and select Yes to mark the task is finished. If you open up Outlook, you should soon see the notification alert come in. This has been installing eDocs workflow and configuring notifications. If you have any questions or need any further assistance, feel free to contact support. We'd be happy to help. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day.